over the years of reading and studying and memorizing and marking up and writing in my Bible, I, every now and then I'll come across a person that says, is it a sin to write in your Bible? Is it wrong to take a highlighter or a pen or a pencil and write in it, mark it up, and things like that? And I've even heard some people that say, I don't I don't mark in my Bible. I don't write in my Bible. I just read it. I think it's a sin. If I want to write something down, then I'll get a journal and write it in there. But is it really a sin to write in your Bible? The answer is no. And I'm going to give you some reasons why I don't believe it's a sin to write in your Bible. Obviously, if you've been listening to me for a while, then you know that I write in my Bible a lot, in my Bibles a lot. But the first reason I don't think writing in your Bible is a sin is because God sees the heart. It says in Psalm 7 and verse 9, I'll let the wickedness of the wicked come to an end, but establish the just, for the righteous God trieth the hearts and reigns. In 1 Samuel 16, 7, For man looketh on the outward appearance, but the Lord looketh on the heart. God sees your heart. He looks on the heart. He tries the hearts and reins. If your intentions of writing in the Bible is to mark out the words to correct them, or if you approach the Bible and you look at it and say, well, this word shouldn't have been that. A better translation would be, or a better rendering would be, or something like that. You're doing it out of a believing heart, out of an unbelieving heart. That's the reason you're doing it, is because you've got an unbelieving heart. Then, yes, I think that would be wrong. Just to go into the Bible and mark out words because you think they shouldn't be there, I think that would be wrong. If you're marking in the Bible because you have a a hatred or a contempt for the Word of God, then I'd say, yeah, that's wrong. You have some sin in your heart. But if you're opening the Bible and reading it and studying it and memorizing it and writing down godly things that come to your mind in the Bible and cross-referencing and making connections, then that's perfectly fine, and I personally recommend that you do it. I think you ought to do it. You see, God sees your heart, and He sees a desire to spend time in the book. I mean, right at that moment, you could have been playing a video game. You could have been watching TV. You could have been texting or scrolling TikTok, but God looks in your heart and sees this person with the desire to be in the Bible and write in their Bible, not because they want to defame the Word, not because they want to just hate on the Word, but because they love the Word and want to spend time with it. One time I was at work and I was marking up my Bible, writing in it, highlighting it, and this guy came and said, why are you def defaming the Word of God is what he said. He did not believe that you should write in your Bible at all. But at the judgment seat of Christ, the Lord is going to try every man's work of what sort it is. You know, what was the reason behind you did what you did? What is the reason behind you writing in your Bible? Were you upset with God and wanted to mark things out? Were you correcting it? Were you doing it so that people could be impressed with you and think that you're some type of Bible genius because your Bible's all marked up? Or was it because you just love the Word and you love to, to go on an adventure in the Word? I don't believe writing in your Bible is a sin because God sees the heart. He sees why you're doing it. He sees why you're doing it because... The, the answer of why you're doing it is because you just love the Word. Now, the next thing. Writing in your Bible is just an outward showing of what has taken place inside as you read the Bible. In Psalm 119, 105, it says, Thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. So when you highlight a verse in yellow... That's just showing that the Word is a light. It shows what that verse did to you on the inside. It lit you up on the inside, and you just took a highlighter, and you lit up your Bible right there. You got some light off of that verse, and it's an outward showing of what took place inside when you light up the verse with a highlighter. In Psalm 119, 130, it says, The entrance of thy words giveth light. It giveth understanding unto the simple. 
When you go through your Bible and highlight Old Testament prophecies and types and pictures of Jesus Christ in red, you're just showing that it's the blood of Jesus on the inside, on the soul that saved you from hell. When I open my Bible or listen to preaching and study and read or open a commentary or anything I'm doing regarding the Bible, I always, I'm always looking for treasures. And it doesn't have to be something new. It might just be new to me. But I'm constantly looking for something to add to my treasure chest. My own personal Bible is my treasure chest. And if you find treasure, you want to keep it. So I mark it to remember where I found it. And that's another reason you mark in the Bible. Not only does it show outwardly what took place in your heart, but you're marking where you found a treasure. And Psalm 119, 162, it says, I thank you, I thank you, Joyce, at thy word, as one that findeth great spoil. The spoil you get in battle is something that belonged to your enemies. It wasn't new, but it was new to you. And the preacher may tell you something he digged up in the Bible years ago. And you take it and write it down in your Bible. It wasn't new, but it was new to you. You just got some spoil. And in Colossians 2, 2 through 3, it says that their hearts might be comforted, being knit together in love unto all riches of the full assurance of understanding, to the acknowledgement of the mystery of God and of the Father and of Christ, in whom are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. You see, the Lord has so many treasures in his word that you can't find them all. They're buried under layers and layers and layers of scriptures. Sometimes you get in the Bible. Sometimes you have to dig a lot to find one. Sometimes you're just walking through the scriptures and all of a sudden you're standing right on it. Or you, you're walking through the scriptures and it's just sticking right up out of the sand and you just fall. You just trip over it. And you look back and there it is. And if you don't mark it, you'll forget where you found it. You forget all about that treasure that the Lord showed you. You want to mark it. You want to write something next to it. And there are so many things to find. And you have to be led of the Lord to find it. You can find stuff about the Bible on Google. But Google couldn't even hold half of what is in the Bible. In Romans eleven thirty three, it says, Oh, the depth of the riches, both of the wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable are his judgments and his ways past finding out. It's such a big book, a never-ending story, that if you don't mark, underline, highlight, whatever it is you got to do, then you're going to forget some things that God showed you. You're constantly forgetting something. In Ephesians 3, 8, it says, Unto me, who am less than the least of all saints, is this grace given, that I should preach among the Gentiles the unsearchable riches of Christ. And Job 5, 9, it says, Which doeth great things and unsearchable, marvelous things, without number. So it's, there's so many things in the Bible. If you don't highlight the things that God shows you, you're going to forget them. But you know why I mark in my Bible? To keep in memory when God spoke to me. That's another one. To keep in memory when God spoke to you. Not even something that is necessarily a deep, hard-to-find treasure even. But a verse that God used to speak to you and give you peace and comfort and security in a certain time of your life. In Ezekiel 44, 5, it says, And the Lord said unto me, He said, A man... Mark well, and behold with thine eyes, and hear with thine ears all that I say unto thee concerning all the ordinances of the house of the Lord. So he told him to mark well, behold with his eyes, and hear with his ears. You need to, when you read the word, you, you see it, you hear it, and you need to mark it. In Jeremiah twenty three eighteen it says, For who hath stood in the counsel of the Lord, and hath perceived and heard his word? Who hath marked his word and heard it? Ever heard the saying, you better mark it down. Read the word, hear the word, 
memorize the word, mark the word. Now, if you don't want to mark in your Bible, you know, that's fine too. You can write it down in a journal or on sticky notes or something. But you definitely can't say it's a sin or blasphemy or a bad thing for somebody to write in the Bible. I think it's a very good thing. I even recommend it. But you mark in your Bible, you keep in memory <clears throat> when God spoke to you. You'll be reading through your Bible all of a sudden. You'll see something wrote next to a verse and it'll remind you of when God helped you through this hard time in your life. Or when God gave you an answer to this certain question that you always had. And it can give you the peace and comfort and security that you need. You see, God does a lot of things for you, but you forget them. You're constantly forgetting. That's the way your mind is. But you want to keep in memory. Now, another reason I'm marking my Bible is to help me compare spiritual things with spiritual in 1 Corinthians 2.13, it says, Which things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. In Isaiah 28.9-10, through 10, it says, Whom shall he teach knowledge? And whom shall he make to understand doctrine? Them that are weaned from the milk and drawn from the breast, for precept must, must, must be upon precept, precept upon precept, line upon line, Line up on line, here a little and there a little. So in your Bible, you go here a little and there a little. You compare this scripture with that scripture. And an easy way to do this is to write down cross-references. Go to a verse, look up a certain phrase from that verse, and then write the verses down where that certain phrase is used. For example, if you want to talk about the judgment seat of Christ, Look up the phrase, and you'll go to Romans 14.10 and 2 Corinthians 5.10. Go to both of the verses, and in Romans 14.10, you write 2 Corinthians 5.10. And in 2 Corinthians 5.10, you write Romans 14.10. And in both places, make a little paragraph full of verses that have to do with the judgment seat of Christ. And then you can teach it anywhere and anytime. And it's going here a little and there a little. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual to come to a good conclusion on that doctrine or topic. And that's how you learn the Bible. Going back and forth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. That's how you grow in the Lord, doing that type of thing. That's how you make your own reference Bible. And see, if you open your Bible... And you get to a verse like that, and you've got all the verses that go along with it. You don't have to take all the time again to go through looking for all the verses. They're all right there, laid out right in front of you. Now, how could that be wrong? How could that be a sin? The next thing is, writing in your Bible can be a hobby. You know, you can do any hobby for the glory of God if you do it right. But what if your hobby is marking up, writing, and underlining in the Bible? It says in 1 Corinthians 10, 31, whether therefore you eat or drink or whatsoever you do, do all to the glory of God. What if, your, what if your hobby itself had to do with God's word itself? You know, people know a lot about their hobbies. Fishermen know fishing. Golfers know golfing. Car lovers know cars. But what if the Bible is your hobby? You know, people think that that's crazy. They may not say it, but you can tell when they how they look at you when, you know, when they're golfing, you're reading the Bible. When they're scrolling their phone, you're reading the Bible. When they're doing their hobby, you're reading the Bible. I mean, when you tell them you spent $150 on a Ruckman reference Bible or $100 on a Common Man's reference Bible or $260 on a wide margin R.L. Allen Bible or $225 on a wide margin Schuyler Bible, they look at you like you're crazy. And I mean, I'm naming off all these Bibles and the average person would think that I wasn't even speaking their language. They would think, why would you spend so much on a Bible? 
But that is the way I am when someone talks about cars or boats or go-karts or video games or guns or whatever it is that they're into. I mean, somebody was talking to me about guns and he said, you know, I've got an AR-15 and an AK-47 and an M-16 and a sawed-off shotgun. I don't know what any of that, that, that stuff is. I got an idea of what it could be, but I don't have no interest in it whatsoever. You know, I'm for guns. I think you ought to have guns. I think you ought to be allowed to have guns. But I'm just not into it. I, I just don't really care about it. I just like the Bible. That's my hobby. You know, I could sit and name off a bunch of stuff, and you'd have no idea what I was talking about. Because it's not your hobby. I mean, you have no idea what the dispensations are, the covenants, or any of that stuff, most likely. If the Bible is not your hobby. If you just go to church on Sunday morning and Sunday night and Wednesday night and you don't get into the Bible any other time, most likely you have no idea what imputation, justification, propitiation, redemption, sanctification, or any of the doctrines of salvation are. You probably have no idea what the abomination of desolation is. You probably have no idea what the Urim and Thummim is. You probably have no idea... Uh, where Malachi is in the Bible. You see, people aren't stupid, they just don't have the same hobby as you. You know, you're not stupid, you just not read the Bible. In 2 Corinthians 10, 4, it says, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. I don't know too much about physical weapons, because my favorite weapon is the Bible. The weapons of our warfare are not carnal. You see, the Bible is your weapon. It's a sharp two-edged sword, according to Hebrews 4.12. Okay, you collect guns. That's a cool hobby. But I collect Bibles. And if you can spend $3,000 or... Well, I don't even know what they cost. I, some guy was telling me he spent 3000 on some gun. If you can spend 3000 on a gun that you may not even shoot. Why can't I spend $250 on a Bible that I'm going to read? You know, you may collect guns, I collect Bibles. What's wrong with that? You collect golf clubs that cost a lot of money. Why is that okay? But it's not okay for me to collect Bibles. How is it a waste of money for me to spend so much on a, a Bible that's going to last me a lifetime that I'm going to actually use when you're spending all this money on something that you just got to look at to set up as decoration. You know, some people like to draw and paint. I like to write and mark in my Bible. Marking and writing in the Bible and reading and studying the Bible goes beyond just something I do to stay right with God. It goes beyond something I do just to, just as a have to religious type of thing it goes beyond something i i just that i just would do on sunday it's something i do every day it's my hobby my way of life what keeps me going you see some people they only open the bible on sundays or on wednesdays when the pastor tells them open your bible here they go to it and then many times the pastor doesn't even come back to it he just says a verse and then says a bunch of sensational stories for the next 30 minutes. And so the only Bible that they got was that one verse that they read for that whole week. That's all they, they did. So obviously, if you do that, you're not going to know too much about the Bible. You're not going to be very in love with the Bible because in your mind, it's just a bunch of black words on white paper and it's not really doing anything for you because you think it's just a bunch of names and you think it's just something that's there for you to stay right with God with or some type of half-to religious thing or something like that. Uh, you, you have no idea what the Bible's all about. You have no idea what the Bible is. Like when I was reading the Bible at work one time, this, this uh, girl came up to me and said, oh, how cute. He's, the cutie's reading his little cute little Bible. Or something like that. I'm thinking, she must not know what's in the Bible if she thinks the Bible's a cute little Bible. 
See, that's what people think about the Bible. They think it's it's cute. It's, uh, it's a lot of people think it's just a sweet little book of sweet little sayings that their grandma reads, and every now and then you get some sweet little phrase out of it to put on Facebook or something like that. They have no idea what they're talking about. They have no idea what the Bible's all about. It's not cute. I wouldn't use the word cute to describe the Bible. It's a bloody book. It's a very negative book. It's a very manly book. It's definitely not what you're thinking it is. It's not just something your sweet little grandma reads. And most of the sweet little grandmas, they don't even read the Bible anymore. You think, oh, my sweet little grandma is so spiritual, she probably doesn't, hasn't even read the whole Bible. It mostly just sits there for decoration. Because reading the Bible has become a lost art. And most certainly, writing in the Bible has become a lost art. If reading it has become a lost art, writing has become a lost art. If you make the Bible your hobby, you're going to be so much more acquainted with the Word of God than your average run-of-the-mill Christian. Wouldn't you like to be a part of a rare breed of Bible believers who still read and write in their Bibles and carry wide-margin Bibles? It doesn't make you more spiritual than others who don't read it. It doesn't give you more favor with God. It doesn't make you more loved by God, but you can be a part of a rare breed and you can have the benefits of knowing more about the Bible because you make it your hobby. You can't hardly find wide margin Bibles anymore. You got to order them off the internet. Nobody writes in their Bibles anymore. Nobody reads their Bibles anymore. So don't think for a second that they are actually going to write in them. It's become a lost start. It's become something that nobody do, does anymore. Nobody wants to spend the time doing that anymore. They've been told, oh, you're not supposed to write in the Bible. Oh, they've been told the Bible's a boring book. It's just a, a, a book of cute little, sweet little sayings in there. They make it seem so unmanly. You know, they uh, the Hollywood and a lot of even pastors even, they give you the idea that that's exactly what the Bible is, just some sweet little religious book. And the only thing it's there for is just to help you stay right with God, which, of course, it is to help you stay right with God. But I believe God wants you to be entertained by it. You can use the Bible to entertain yourself with. I mean, think about it for a minute. You can binge read just like you would binge watch a TV show. And you're like, just on the edge of your seat, what's going to happen next? Even though you already know what's going to happen next. But you'll turn to a page that you've read a thousand times. Something pops out at you that you, you didn't know, even know was there. Or like they have a, a lot of times in movies, they'll put stuff like behind the scenes of the movie. Like in the background of the scene. And people will be studying the movie just to find these little hidden Easter eggs in the movie. You know, you can do that with the Bible. You're just going through the Bible, looking for things that you don't think anybody's ever seen. Or you've never seen. And then you take your highlighter and you highlight it and put a little note there because you say, you're like, wow, I just found something that I never saw before. Even though I read this a thousand times, I never noticed that before. Now, you can binge read the Bible. People binge watch Netflix shows. You can binge read the Bible. You know, people uh, sit and spend hours and hours on a video game. You can sit and spend hours and hours reading the Bible. They do that because they want to get some little achievement to pop up on the screen. Achievement unlocked. Because they killed so many zombies. Kill... 2,000 zombies, and you unlock this achievement on the video game. Well, you can uh, count how many times that you've read the Bible. And each time you read the Bible, put a little check mark at the front. Achieve something that's going to last, that's going to have eternal value. 
a lot of the things we're doing does not have eternal value. You're just kind of wasting your time. The Bible can be used for entertainment. It can be your hobby. It's more than just a book that shows you how to be right with God. It's more than just a half-to religious book. But these are just some reasons why I write in my Bible. Some reasons why everybody should write in their Bible. Mark in their Bible, underline it, study it. At least, if you if you don't feel comfortable writing in the Bible, at least get you some type of journal to write in so that you can remember when God spoke to you, so that you can remember all these cross-references. And when you find a treasure in the Bible, you can use that journal to write it down. You just want to stay in the Bible. Make it your hobby.